Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Ask NK. Today we have some interesting updates coming from the folks at Blender Foundation as they've just announced Blender 3.1, the beta. Now the beta comes with a lot of cool improvements and stuff and we've already talked about most of this on the channel. But today we're going to do a rundown of potentially the final things that you will be getting and alongside we'll talk about a cool freebie that you'll be getting as well but either ways let's talk about the release so blender 3.1 the beta was released on the 28th of january and this simply means that everything has been locked in and only bug fixes will be done from now going forward now the pre-release date and also the final release date is going to be sometime in march and for those who like to test this and also follow up with this you can go over to the link in the description and download it and try it for yourself now without out of the way there's a couple of things that might make it over to blender 3.1 at this point and i think this will be the major features of this particular release and they include animation and rigging we have the grease pencil there's also nodes and physics pipeline assets and input output and finally the render and cycles now every other thing actually makes up like the add-ons and uh you know python but these are like the major things i think will make it to the final release of blender 3.1 as the main release features now let's get started by talking about geometry node now we've seen a huge improvement to geometry node since the last time we saw it with blender 3.0 the release and you know it has lots of nice things but before you even start talking about it i want you guys to see that we have a brand new splat screen and of course a huge shout out to Orion Cloud for making this beautiful artwork. So with this out of the way, let's talk about the geometry node and see a little bit of what the improvements sort of look like. Now one of them is if we simply jump over to the geometry nodes right here and then we make a brand new geometry node section, you would notice that if we click and drag now and let go, we can now easily type stuff. So we've already talked about the idea that there's a lot of improvements to geometry node and this is one of the coolest ones. So you no longer need to tap shift and tap A on the keyboard again and do all of that. Now you can just simply click, drag and let go. And once that is off, you can start typing and doing all the amazing things that you want. So one of the other things or nodes that they've added is the extrude mesh, which is something that I've already talked about and you can now extrude your meshes depending on how you want them to be placed so this now makes sense especially if you like to you know extrude one particular part of the mesh and then you would like to use that particular part of the mesh to scatter stuff that might come in very handy another thing that makes sense with this is using selections so we've already looked at how you can use selections to drive certain things and that looks pretty impressive as well we've talked about the idea that you can drive another extrude mesh node based of the output groups of a given extrude node so in this case we can use the top and wire this down there and you can see what we're getting and we can wire the side and of course you can see what we're getting interesting patterns you can tell and while we're still at the topic of working with your extrude if you have a selection like this you can simply you know make the selection set it as a group go over to your object switch over to your geometry let's draw in that geometry right there and you know that we just talked about the extrude so we can run that extrude right in here and connect this right over there so in this case because we're working with individuals you can see all everything is extruding and we can turn this off turn it on depending on what we want and i can also pick the selection and connect this selection right here so like i mentioned earlier we've talked about this on the channel but this is for those who are asking about inverting so since we're talking about the whole thing let's talk about how you can invert stuff so by default because i have this group selected you can see that everything so let's just orbit everything minus here and minus here is uh blowing up so because we have the group selected everything minus these two are you know they're just blowing up but if you like to invert this what you can do is you can simply call on the boolean so i'm just going to call the boolean and then i think the mat boolean should do it and we're just going to connect that mat boolean right here so by default you need two objects and you need to run either an and operation or an x or operation you know depending on what you want so now i'm just going to select not because it is not this so it's more like inverting it and in this case you can now play with this stuff so this is for those who are asking about you know how can i uh sort of mix this invert it you, you can simply invert it like so and we can also go ahead and just do a simple copy and paste run this through and you have something pretty interesting really really quick now we've also seen that cycles currently render volumes and if you take a look you notice that we have a volume grid now and cycles now renders volume points as a 
as as cool as it can get so how you can get this running really quick here is we're just going to convert this mesh to points real quick and then we would also convert our points to volumes and with the points to volumes here we would be able to make a quick connection like so and yeah we can start making that render let's throw in that grid you know i'm just going to throw in a real grid you know quickly and we can run this through and throw in a join node just to have these two connected so i'm just going to connect this one there actually let's just click and drag and connect it here and also connect it right over there so increasing the size goes like so and this way we can also throw in a transform so i'm just going to run a transform here and with this transform we can now transform this object all the way up so we're transforming this upwards like so and if we switch over to cycles we would be able to get a pretty decent render from here so i'm just going to go ahead throw this right in there bring it down and you can see so your volumes are rendering really quick and you can take advantage of the point cloud rendering that cycles now supports from the geometry node and do all of that stuff and while we talk about the geometry node then you know we talked about the idea that if you click and drag you can let go and get things happening this doesn't only work for the geometry node with 3.1 if you go over to your shaders and in this case i'm just going to move this down and also move this over here and click on new so let's grab that there if you choose to use the base color and click and drag you can see you have all of the search and this is also pretty impressive you can do that for almost everything so in this case if i also go over to the bsdf i click and drag you can search if you go over to volumes click and drag you can search and this is just pretty pretty wild now with this set let's take a look at some improvements to cycles so cycles is looking extremely nice this time lots of improvements are coming over to this and these things include features that will definitely change the way you get to render so with our very simple flat architectural scene opened right here rendering this is super fast so they've added a brand new optics temporal denoising support and regardless of this if you're thinking about switching from one camera to another probably you want to see different views while you're rendering you can also take advantage of all of this and get that render happening really quick in this case if we just simply double click one thing you know one camera I'll double click another camera. We can easily switch from the kitchen to the living room. We can double click and go over to the sofa section of the scene and we can get these things to happen really quick. The idea here is for you to iterate faster and get the visualization of what your final work would look like. Now, this is all beautiful, nice and sweet, but there is also something that I did find if you open some previous scene. So in this case, I'm looking at a previous, you know, splat screen of an older version of Blender. And this is, this is nice. But one thing which I found out is the particle simulator is now being rendered. So if you're coming from previous versions of Blender where you get to apply a box or you use a box to create particles, you might essentially get these things to be visible and as much as we're going to select them and delete them it is just one of those things to keep in mind the sheer idea that you can also move the timeline back and forth and also get blender to render your scenes like nothing is happening is just something that makes a lot of sense and with apple supporting blender right now is now a feature that both mac and pc users can now take advantage of this is also something that's pretty new in blender as cycles now has a metal gpu back end which was contributed by the folks at apple and the metal gpu rendering is currently supported only for apple m1 computers currently running mac os 12. so this implementation is still in its very early stage so blender users that own an m1 mac would need to keep this in mind while working with blender there's a couple more improvements that are potentially coming over to blender and one of them has to do with the ray tracing precision so at this point many artifacts from rendering small large and also far away objects have been eliminated but you know there's always going to be precision issues when it comes to scale and uh the best thing to do in most cases is just to totally remove all of these things that would cause these issues but either ways, once you're rendering small, large, or even objects that are far away, some of the artifacts that you regularly get have now been totally taken care of. 
At the same time, there is a point cloud stuff that we've just mentioned. So in case you're trying to render point cloud, you know, direct rendering of point cloud objects as spheres are now supported. And at the same time, if you're trying to render point cloud directly from your geometry node, that is something that is also very, very doable. There's also a new feature in terms of baking a new camera lens and at the same time, a couple more features that would just simply make you working with cycles a bit more easier. For pipeline, assets, and also the input outputs, animated vertex colors can now be exported as Alembic and now you can read override layers and you can use them to drive different parts of your animation data. So from the geometry changes, which has to do with topology or attributes and down to animations and so on and so forth, you can now load these as individual layers and use them to drive your Alembic files. Alongside with all of this, the Asset Browser is also having a faster indexing for browsing. For those who work with images and objects, there's a couple of improvements in that area. GLTF 2.0 now has a huge improvement in terms of the importer and the exporter. And of course, the USD is something that has come to stay. And the last time we talked about USD, we looked at the idea that the folks at Blender Foundation alongside with the folks at NVIDIA are working hand in hand to make sure that the USD supports for both NVIDIA Omniverse and also Blender 3.1 actually has a very wonderful handshake. And for sure, we'll be getting more and more add-ons come over to Blender. Like we have the Copy Global Transform. There's also improvements to Rigify, OBJ, FBX, Atomic Blender, and also a couple more that are yet to be announced. And for those who are into Grease Pencil, there's a couple of improvements in that area as well, as we'll be getting a new option to toggle collection inverse selection. Now, for those who are also thinking about how to preserve contour lines, there's an update to that as there's a new option to preserve contour lines and if you take a look at what we have here as an image you can see that right here we're having all those jagged lines and all those artifacts while you know 3.1 is promising something much more cleaner you can also take a look at this right here and see what we would be getting so improvements 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 is what we'll be getting with the coming release of blender 3.1 and for sure, for those who like to read more about the rigging and animation stuff, we will be getting a couple more things in this regard. So all of these things put together are things that might essentially make Blender 3.1 stand out as these are more like the major features that I'm seeing that might be coming to 3.1. But either ways, you can also go ahead and take a look at some other things like the library override, a couple of general functions and fixes that has been made to subdivision surface. There's also some updates to the Python API, image editor, the sculpting branches and getting huge update this period. And I think maybe we should be saving that for after Pablo is done with his beautiful project that he's doing right now, which is called the Cozy Blanket. And uh, that is also a project I'm actually willing to look at. And for those thinking about user interface, we're just getting, you know, a little bit of quality of life improvements in this regard. So with all this said, let's talk about that freebies that I mentioned earlier. So for those who like to get over 80 procedural materials for Blender that you can simply load into your asset browser right now and start working with it. I'm going to put a link in the description that will bring you over where you'll be able to grab these materials and you can reuse them and do whatever you want to do with them. So Adam has made this one possible and it is just pretty impressive. All the kind of things that you can leverage of this, throw them into your asset browser and you can easily start working with them as quick as possible. And at the same time, if you're thinking about more materials that you might want to work with, you might want to also consider the real-time materials for Blender made by our very own Ducky 3D. So this is also another beautiful one and it is quite impressive the kind of things that you can do with this. So if you need the free one, you can grab all these free ones and start playing with them. Pretty crazy things that you can do. And if you're looking for something even more, you can consider the real-time materials for Blender by Ducky 3D. And that's about it. Blender 3.1, the beta is now here. And of course, I would like to know what you guys think about this one in the comment section. What is your favorite feature coming over to Blender 3.1? And what do you think about the milestone for lots of features that might be making it to this release? Tell me what you guys think about this one in the comment section. And of course, if you like this video or you learned something from this, you can go ahead and give a like and don't forget to share with a friend. And until I see you guys in the next one, peace.